You know, during this, sometimes God works in really, really strange ways. He probably works in strange ways as well. But he really does work in rather odd ways. In the last two weeks, I've had uh, a couple of verses going through my mind that aren't in the Bible. Now that's interesting, isn't it? I mean, verses going through your mind that aren't in the Bible. I want us to look today at the power of God. I want us to look at the power of God today. And I know that God wants us to see this power. Now I'm going to, I'm going to put the verses up there that, uh, that aren't in the Bible, that God spoke to me about. And you'll see, some of you will know these. Some of you will know where they're from. Well, it tells you where they're from. They're from Shakespeare. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against them, against a sea of troubles, and by opposing, end them. And I thought, you've got something there. You have got something there. You've got a choice. Here's the question. You've got a choice. Sorry, Stuart, that needs to come down a little bit. It's going to get a bit echoey otherwise. Just the, the stuff going out for them. Thank you. We have a choice. The question is, in your mind, in your mind, do you consider it better to suffer all the stuff that's coming against you? Or in your mind, do you consider it better to fight against the stuff coming against you and end it? Yeah? That's the question. That's what he's asking there. So would you prefer just to carry on with everything coming against you and not do anything about it? Or would you prefer to fight against it and end it? End it. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So who would like to end it? Yes. You'd like to end the stuff coming against you. Then you're always going to have to do something about it. Because the first part of it, to suffer it, are you going to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune? In other words, all the negative stuff that's coming against you, you don't have to do anything. It just comes. Would you agree with that? Mm -hmm. The devil's always going to have a go. People are always going to have a go. All sorts of things are going to happen. But you have to take arms against the sea of troubles and oppose them and end them. Would you agree? Yeah. Hallelujah. So I think Shakespeare had something there. I'm not so sure about the rest of the verses going on from there because it starts getting a bit strange. But I know that this is good and God's telling us something. See, the Bible says, say the Bible says. Bible it's so important, we need to be able to say that a lot of time. The Bible says, no weapon formed against you will prosper. The weapons of your warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down the strongholds. You have the armour of God, you have the name of Jesus, you have the power of God. These are the arms you can take up and oppose what the devil bringing at you. That you can win and you can get rid of all this stuff that's coming against you. I don't like things coming against me and I'm going to take arms against them. And I'm going to oppose them and end them. Would you agree with that? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's have a look first of all, Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon formed against you will prosper. Every tongue that rises in judgment against you you condemn in Jesus' name. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. Why don't I need to have Bible in front of me to say that? Because I say it all the time. You want to know that scripture and just be able to say it. Well, you see, there's two parts to it. There's two, three, really. The last part being God saying, if you're a believer, then you are righteous. Because I said so. Yeah. I make you righteous, not you yourself. Mm. But the first two parts, the first one, it says no weapon formed against you will prosper. That's a statement, that is a fact from God Almighty. Mm. You don't have to do anything to make that true except be a believer. Mm. No weapon formed against you will prosper. It might look as if it's going to harm you, it might look as if it's going to damage you, it might look as if it's going to hurt you, but it can't prosper, it cannot finish off the job it started. When you get sick and you're troubled in your physical body, it's not going to kill you. 
Because that scripture says it won't. It won't prosper. It won't finish off its job. It can't. But the second part of it is important. Every tongue that rises in judgment against you, who's going to take, condemn it? God or you? Me. You are. You're going to condemn that tongue that rises in judgment against you. And often when people have been with a hassle going on in our lives, I'll say, and we condemn every tongue that rises in judgment against us, especially yours, devil, in Jesus' name. Now we have to say it. You have to say that. If you can be specific and say what the tongue's been saying and what the devil's been saying, then by all means do that and just condemn it. Say, all right, this is condemned. It has no power over me anymore. And once you say that, the words being spoken have the same amount of power as the weapon being formed. It's not going to prosper. It's not going to prosper. Amen. But you have to do your part to make that true. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So what we're going to do now is look at some of these other scriptures. Because if you're fighting against the devil, you need to know how to do it, in Jesus' name. In 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3 says, For though we walk after the flesh, we do not walk according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. In that last verse, there's two very important statements. Things that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. Whose knowledge of God? Yours. They exalt themselves against the knowledge of God that you have in you. So if you're not getting yourself filled up with the Word of God and what you know about Jesus, you're going to be an easy target in this area. You understand what I'm saying? Exalts itself against the knowledge of God. To exalt itself against the knowledge of God when there's only a small amount of knowledge of God is easy. When there's a large amount of knowledge of God, because you've been studying the Word, you've been praying, you've been reading, you've been fellowshipping, you've been around other Christians, you're watching God TV and stuff like that, you've got a large amount of knowledge of God now. Amen. It's harder for that thing to exalt itself against it. And the second part says, bringing thoughts into captivity to the obedience of Christ. When a thought comes up in your mind, you need to know immediately whether that lines up with Jesus or not. And the only way you're going to do that is to know what Jesus has said. Thankfully, we don't need to remember everything that Jesus has said, because he said, the Holy Spirit will bring to your remembrance every word I ever spoke. Amen. So, it's good to know the Word of God. It's sometimes quicker that way, because it will come straight to your mind, Without you having to say, oh, sorry, Holy Spirit, I've forgotten. What did Jesus say about that? And then listen. But it's easy to do this. All the things that come against us are fleshly, natural things. Like sickness and disease and lack. Yeah, they're, they're physical things. You can deal with them in the physical. But the way we respond to them should not be physical. I'm not saying don't go to the doctor if there's something wrong with you. But you should still be doing the warfare against any sickness that's coming against you. Amen. You should still be doing that warfare. Amen. We don't fight back in a physical way. You can't fight the devil in a physical way. But you fight, you can't, you can't really fight sickness in a physical way. You have to go and see a doctor, a doctor gives you something chemical. But God created the human body he created the chemicals. All the doctor does is say, you want that particular chemical, do it four times a day for a couple of weeks and you'll be alright. Because God has already created the ability within the body to respond to that. That's yeah? It's just faster sometimes if you can pray and get rid of it straight away. Would you agree? Yes. Yeah? I know that being said, hate it. It stops me doing what I need to do for God. We fight with our spiritual weapons. With the power of God that is in us. And we start at the bottom of this list. In the last verse there, verse 5. We start by bringing our thoughts into captivity. A, a negative thought that comes into your mind. 
you should grab it and go, whoa, 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 stop, 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 stop. Let's have a think about that. Is this lining up with Jesus? Does this talk line up with Jesus? If it doesn't, I reject it in Jesus' name. Because if you don't deal with that thought, it will become an argument. The imagination of King James, or King James said, it will become something that's a bit stronger, a bit harder. Now an argument is something that goes on in your mind where your mind is actually arguing with the Word of God. Some of you have experienced that, I'm sure all of us have experienced that sometime. And the kind of argument that comes up is, is you know, <coughs> yeah, I know I, yeah, I know I received prayer for that sickness, that disease that I've got, but it doesn't always work for me. And I, I know it works for lots of other people, but it doesn't always work for me. That is an argument going on in your head. You should have taken the thought captive the first time it appeared. Take the thought captive. If you don't, then you've got an argument to deal with. You've got a high thing. And it exalts itself against the knowledge of God. He said, yeah, but the Word of God will work in you because you didn't pray for 48 hours last week. You didn't read your Bible for nine hours yesterday morning. You didn't do things, oh, there's something you're holding against that person. I'm, God won't heal you. It's all lies. It's all lies coming from the devil. He will heal you all the time. You don't have to be free from sin to be healed. Amen. Just look in the Bible. Loads of people, they were sick, they came to Jesus and he healed them. How do I know they were sinners? Because Jesus hadn't died for anybody yet. Of course they were sinners. All the people that got healed in the Old Testament, and there were quite a few. They got healed because they were sinners, they couldn't possibly be saints yet. We're saints, we've got a different perspective. But it doesn't matter, we still have to come against these arguments in our mind when they're speaking against the knowledge of God. Your knowledge of God. So if you've got plenty of knowledge of God, when the, when the devil starts bringing some stuff up, you can say, whoa, that does not line up with the Word of God. doesn't line up with the Word of God. I'm not listening to that anymore. You shut up. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. He's got all my sickness, carried my diseases. My God is the God that heals me. Amen. And you can speak scripture after scripture about that, like we heard this morning already. But you take these thoughts, you take these arguments, you grab hold of them, and you make them obey the Word of God. You speak things in your, out with your mouth, and then you start thinking the right thing yourself. Because if you don't come against these arguments, you don't stop them working in your mind, they will become strongholds. Now once it's become a stronghold, almost undoubtedly you're going to need help to get rid of it. Because it's now gone past two stages you could have dealt with. It, you could have dealt with it at the thought level, you could have dealt with it at the argument level, and, but you didn't. So now it's a stronghold. You might need help. You don't always, but you might need help to get rid of that. And if you recognize there's any of you in your life like that, you let us know, we'll get rid of it for you. But you can end them, even at that late stage. You can end them, because we've got the power. We've got the power. God has given us the power to do this. You see, the key is to recognize that we are attacking the works of the devil in a completely different way to the normal way of attacking anybody else. I mean, if someone was to start fighting with you and try to steal something off you, you might want to bash them and hit them and knock them to the ground or something, which is quite normal, that's quite right, it's quite acceptable in this country. To bash somebody that's so going to go at you, you know, that's normal. But it's not going to work with the devil. We need different tactics. Now, I don't know if you know, it was in the news the other day, that the army is adopting different tactics now. The army is adopting completely different tactics when it comes to the IS and other terrorist organisations. It's starting uh, another, a completely new brigade of about 2,000 people. Uh, called uh, Brigade Number 77, mm. which is very which is opportune and interesting because it's named after the same name as the the Chindits mm. in the the war in Burma. Yeah. Now the Chindits were commandos, and they used to get behind enemy lines and get to know the people, hearts and minds job, get to know the people and they would infiltrate the enemy lines, they would find out from the people where the Japanese strongholds were. They would find out where their supply lines were from the people. 
and they would deal with them. This new brigade, still based on the original, they're still going to, even going to use the same badge that the Chindits had. That's a, that is a Chindit. It's a mythological beast that the people in Malaysia know about. It's not real, of course, because they thought mythological, but they're going to use the same <coughs> badge for these people in 77 Brigade because they want everybody to recognize the way they're going to do things. They're going to do things in a completely different way to normal warfare. These people, I'm not kidding, if you haven't seen this news, these people are going to fight with Facebook and Twitter. Yeah. They're going to find ways of getting to the people and finding ways those people can get information back to them. Finding ways of getting to the people and, and, and getting information about the enemy. And the, the whole brigade is being set up for this specific purpose. They're going to be armed with all the normal skills of soldiers, but they're going to be using technology. The army believes that winning hearts and minds has never been more important. They did a lot of it in, in, uh, in Afghanistan, where there were the people going out, the uh, Arab-speaking people were going out and, and trying to win the confidence of the people, because the people were scared. Because if they told the, the, the British soldiers where they had seen a man plant, planting an IED, they would probably get killed. So they didn't want to do that. This way, doing it through technology, doing it through normal stuff nowadays, they can send a, a, a tweet, they can send a, a Facebook message to the British troops and say, I've just seen a man planting an IED and this is where it is. And that's what they're trying to do now. You see, the devil is also after your hearts and minds. He's after your heart to, to make you feel despondent and, oh, I can't do this. And he's after your mind at all times. Joyce Meyer wrote a brilliant book you want to read if you haven't. The Battlefield of the Mind. Talking about the devil having a go at you all the time. I, can, I, don't need, I don't need the Holy Ghost to tell me. I can guarantee that within the last 10 seconds, the devil has planted thoughts in somebody's mind. Even if it's, for goodness sake, let's get out of here. I need my lunch. You know, even something as simple as that is from the devil. Now it says in verse 10 of chapter 6 of Ephesians, Finally, my brethren, I love Paul, he says finally, and then goes on for another whole chapter. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armour of God that you may be able to stand against the wild of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. We are not wrestling against flesh and blood just like we, re we read earlier. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We are fighting against the devil. Even when it looks like a person is attacking you, I know who's behind it. It's the devil. So we have to find a way of attacking him that isn't the normal fisticuffs way. Or shoot, you can't shoot the devil. You can't even <coughs> wait till he runs across in front of you and trip him up. You've got to defeat him in a spiritual sense with the word of God. We wear this armour so we can stand against his tactics. No. We wear this armour so we can stand against his tactics. I mean, I know where modern warfare has changed so much that um, in, in Iraq, no, it was in Afghanistan, when they first fired something in the, in, against the Taliban and against Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan, there was no way that the people there could retaliate. It was impossible. Because it was fired from a submarine in the mail. How can you fight against that? And we ought to think the same way. When we are firing rockets from us, using the name of Jesus at the devil, he doesn't stand a chance. He stands no chance whatsoever because we have already won. Jesus has already won the battle. We're just enforcing it now. The policeman who stops you for speeding 
doesn't have to produce a new law saying you're not allowed to do more than 70 miles an hour in motorway. It's already been written. He just can enforce it. And there are laws in the Bible that talk about no weapon being formed against you or prosper. Amen. You stand on that word and you say, I'm not having this devil. Amen. No weapon formed against me is going to prosper. So you just back off in Jesus' name. Amen. I, I, and I also know that one of the biggest problems of many of you here, God just spoke to me and told me, you never talk to the devil. You don't talk to him. If someone was to knock on your door and you open the door and say, excuse me, I'm coming and steal some stuff out of your house. <laughs> Most of you go, okay then. <laughs> I'll get out of the way and let him, let him push you past and get in and take your stuff. Because you're not used to standing against stuff. We need to stand against the wiles of the devil. And having done all, stand. And like Jerry Savell said, when he read that scripture, he said, stand against the wiles of the devil, and having done all, to stand, stand. And he said to the Lord, how long do I have to stand? And the Lord just said, until. Until what you want to happen has happened. Amen. Until you want to get rid of it has gone. Until what you want to push down is gone. Amen. Until what you want to stop in somebody else's life because you're praying for them has stopped. You, you have to take arms against this sea of troubles and by opposing them, end them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're not having it anymore in Jesus' name. Amen. Every one of these works of the devil, every one, principalities, powers, rules of the darkness, they're all different ranks. It doesn't matter what right they are, including the devil himself, he does what you tell him when you speak in the name of Jesus. Amen. We have seen that as an example in our life, where we've been praying for people, and, and we aren't able to get through. And then suddenly we realise, this isn't the devil, we're speaking against the devil, it's not the devil, it's in the flesh. Right. And we stop telling them, get flesh sorted out, it's all sorted. When you tell the devil to shut up and be quiet, he will. When you tell the devil to back off, he will. When you tell the devil to take his hand off your finances, or your body, or your family, he will. Amen. There might be symptoms and stuff come at you moments later, make it seem as if he hasn't gone. But he's a liar. Amen. He's a liar, the devil is. Every time he speaks, he lies. He can't tell the truth. <coughs> then further on he says, Therefore take up the whole armour of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having good in your waist of the truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all taking the shield of faith, with which you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. The only part of our armour that is offensive is the sword of the spirit, the word of God. If you want to stop the devil, you have to speak. You can't think this. No, you, can't. you can't think, I come against you, devil, in It doesn't work. You have to speak it out of your mouth. You have to speak, speak, speak all the time. There's no other way of doing it. The word of God was spoken by the Father, was spoken by Jesus, was spoken by the disciples, etc., as led by God. Now you have to do the same thing and speak it. You look at you look in, in, in many of the letters of Paul. He says, I'm speaking this, but it was written down by this man who is being scribed for me today. I'm speaking it, he's writing it down. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. Many of you don't have much faith because you never speak the Word of God out and hear it with your ears. You have to read the Word of God out loud with your ears. So it works every time. In Jesus' name. We need to stay in faith and those fiery darts will be quenched. They're coming at you, fiery darts coming at you. But you're, you don't have to do anything about it. You don't just stay in faith. They will die by themselves. It will hit your shield and just go out. Amen. You see, if they don't hit your shield, if they're not in faith, I'll tell you what happens to the fiery dart. You can check it out in James and you can check it out in other places in the Bible. It hits your tongue. The tongue is a ruling member set on fire of hell. 
It hits your tongue and you speak the words of the devil. Oh, that's it, I'm sick. That's it, I'm broke. That's it, it'll never work for me. That's the kind of thing you speak. You're speaking the words of the devil. But keep your faith up and it won't happen. In Philippians 2.9 it says, Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow. Of those in heaven, those on earth and those under the earth. And that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. It's the name above every name. It's the name above every sickness. It's the name above every aspect of lack. It's the name above everything that can come against you. <coughs> the name of Jesus. And it says elsewhere in the Bible, there's only one name that's above the name of Jesus, and that's Father. He gave Jesus the name above every name, but it doesn't mean to say it's over his name. Jesus is the name above every name we'll ever encounter that could come against us. Everything. Amen. And we have to speak that name of Jesus. You have to also speak his words. Every time we speak in the name of Jesus, the devil bows in obedience. In Ephesians 6.10, Finally, my brethren, we just read this a minute ago, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Don't try and be strong yourself, it won't work. You have to be the strong, strong in his power, in his might. You have to continually say, Lord, I can't do this, I need some help please. As soon as you step back and try and do it yourself, he steps back and you end up trying to do it yourself and it won't work. He will defeat you, the devil will defeat you. But you know, when you've got your armour on, and you pull that visor down, and you just stand there speaking the word of Jesus, the devil has no other option. He believes you are Jesus. And he backs off. Amen. When somebody wearing Jesus' armour is speaking his words, who would you think it is? <laughs> I think I'd think it was Jesus. Yeah. And sometimes I have seen people I know people in this church even, and I've heard them speaking against the devil, and I know that when they do, that devil's quaking in his boots, Amen. because he's doing some stuff against them, and they're saying, I'm not having it, I am not having that, I'm standing against the walls of you devil in the name of Jesus, I'm speaking in Jesus' name, you will back off, you will back down, you will shut up in Jesus' name, Amen. you will stop talking to my mind, I am not listening anymore, Amen. I am listening to the word of God, and I'm speaking out now, and no weapon formed against me will prosper, and every tongue, including yours devil, I'm condemning right now, so shut up and leave me alone in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You've got to start getting used to talking to the devil. Amen. You don't have to have a long conversation with him, you just tell him what to do. Yeah. Yeah? He's not your servant, as in somebody who, who has been appointed to serve you, but he has that kind of rank. Servant. He does what he's told. Especially when you speak in the name of Jesus. He's just a sniveling little stick. Hasn't got a leg to stand. And you just come against him and he doesn't have any choice. In Acts 4 verse 33, have I missed that one? Yeah, I brought it down here, but I didn't put it down obviously. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Amen. They witnessed with great power. Where did they get this great power from? From Him. All the time they were saying, we can't do this, we need your help. We're weak in this, can we have your strength? And with great boldness they spoke the word of God. So what is your personal answer to Hamlet's question? Which is more noble in your mind? To suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune? Or to take arms against the sea of trouble and by opposing it? End it? Which are you going to go for? The first one or the second one? Then you're going to have to do something about it. You're going to have to speak words. 
You can't get away without speaking words. You have to speak these words against the devil. You have to speak these words against the thoughts coming against your mind. You have to speak these words to pull down those strong.